Unit 7 review, quick review of Unit 7. Unit 7 deals with straight line motion. The entire unit was on motion on a straight line. What do you mean motion on a straight line? That means we got things moving just on a line. They can move left and right, or they can move up or down um, on a y-axis. We're going to stick to this x-axis left and right, but also talk about a y-axis up and down. And um, there's three things you can see. We got position which is like where we are located. We got velocity, which is like a direction that we are traveling. And like, uh, our, uh, we'll talk about how it's a change in position, how position is increasing right now. Velocity is negative, it's a direction, it's moving to the left. We can see how position is decreasing. Then we have acceleration, which is how velocity will be increasing or decreasing. Uh, and now if my acceleration is negative, my velocity is decreasing. And we'll talk about how that talk, uh, you know, tells us uh, if we are speeding up or slowing down. Uh, we'll talk about our location uh, relative to the origin, whether we are traveling towards the origin or away from the origin. If all these different things need to be taken into account. So that, that's what we'll find is they're all related to each other in terms of derivatives. Like position is the location where you are located, not how far you've traveled. We typically use x of t for position. It's on an x-axis. Could be y of t for a position on the y-axis. You're told y of 5 equals 4. It doesn't mean after five seconds I've traveled four uh, meters. It just says at the time, fifth second, fifth minute, whatever, at t equals five, my position is at four. That means I am here at four when this says five seconds. Okay? So, like here at position four, and this would say five seconds. If you're asked about initial position, that's when t is zero. So like x of zero equals negative two, which means at time equals zero, my position is negative two. Okay, and that's just where I'm going. Now, what if position's changing? What if my position goes from negative 2 to 6 over the course of 2 seconds? Well, that will have a change in position. So if I go from a position of negative 2 to a position of 6 over 2 seconds, this is what's going on. Well, let's, let's figure out, like, how far I've went. Well, from negative 2 to 6, I've displaced 8 meters. You know, 6 minus negative 2. Over the course, so giving some context, over the course of 2 seconds, that means I've traveled 4 meters, 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 per second. This, my friends, is velocity. And velocity is the change in position. This would be an average velocity over two seconds. So if I started at a position of negative two, but I have a velocity on average of four meters after two seconds, I'll get to the position of six. There's my position of six. Okay? Uh, so if an average velocity is an average rate of change, I'll write this. This is messy. This is very messy. Average rate of change of position we use V of T for velocity. Average rate of change is like you can't slope.
That means if we want to find an instant velocity, an actual velocity, our velocity will look for an instantaneous rate of change of position. How's my position changing at a moment? Well, we're not going to look at a moment. We'll look just to the left or just to the right of the moment. We'll look at a tangent slope. V equals X prime. You are used to F and F prime. Well, we can think of like position as being like F. That means V of T is like, I'm not going to say it's equal. Don't, don't ever like say F prime when they're asking about a position. It's like F double prime. Acceleration is going to be the change in velocity. You can see like if my acceleration is negative, my velocity is decreasing. Here's my velocity values going lower. Here are my velocity values increasing. Here are my velocity values decreasing. 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4, negative 6, 5, 4, 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. So acceleration ends up being the change of velocity. We are changing my velocity by 2.4 meters per second. We use A of T for acceleration. Acceleration is just the change in velocity. An average acceleration would be average rate of change of velocity. A actual acceleration will be an instantaneous rate of change of velocity. That means A of t is the derivative of v, which means that's the second derivative of x. We are used to f, f prime, f double prime. Well, now we have x, v, then a, where x is f. V is F prime, and A could be considered F prime. It's like it, not the exact same, but uh, they're, all kind of, they're all kind of the same. So we can take derivatives from X to get to V, V to get to A. We can take antiderivatives, and if we have initial conditions, we can go from A to V to, to X, okay? F double prime to F prime. Uh, velocity increasing, speed increasing, different, okay? Now, if we're talking about velocity, we should talk about speed. Speed is the absolute value of velocity. It's velocity without direction. Now, velocity increasing or decreasing is very easy. Okay? Calculus, we are in a calculus class. To discover if something's going up, we just don't we don't look at v of zero, then v of one, and then v of two, and we say, oh, the numbers are going up, it's increasing. No, 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 no. Never look at values over the course of an interval. You have to look at what's going on at an exact moment. You look at derivatives. You remember something is increasing. This is how we find maxes and mins by looking at the derivative. And if a derivative is positive, a positive value for a derivative means that original function is increasing. A positive, a negative value for a derivative means the original function is decreasing. So velocity is increasing if its derivative v prime, which is a, is positive. Velocity is decreasing if v prime, which is a, is negative. But you can have decreasing velocity values like 9 to 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3. Now let's look at that situation. 9 to 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3. Here's 9. Here's my decreasing. 9 to 8 to 7 to 6 to 5 to 4 to 3. Let's do that a little quicker. Maybe we'll start out with like 4. 4. Three, two, one. See, my velocity values are decreasing. But is my, is my uh, speed decreasing? In that situation, yes. But let's keep playing. So it's like my, my guy was slowing down. Let's show that again. My guy is slowing down. I don't know why it resets. Four, three, two, guy slowing down. But watch. Eventually, the velocity is going to hit a zero. 
and my velocity values are going to continue to decre decrease. Now, velocity decreasing means we're going to go from 0 to negative 1, to negative 2, to negative 3. So here's my velocity decreasing, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. But am I slowing down? No, in this case, I'm actually speeding up in that direction. Here's another situation. Here my velocity values are going to increase. The acceleration is going to be positive. So I'm going to go 4 to 3 to 2 to 1. 4 to 3 to 2 to 1. But what's going on right there? My guy is slowing down. That's weird because my acceleration is positive. We think I'm speeding up because the acceleration is positive. But no, no. I went from 4 to 3 to 2 to 1 to 0. I was slowing down. And then, once I start going to the right, and I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 for my velocity, I'm speeding up. So speed is actually not just acceleration. Speed increasing, decreasing. It's not just acceleration, positive acceleration, negative. We could either be speeding up going to the right or going to the left. And the key is my velocity and my acceleration have to be going in the same direction. So here, I'm going to be speeding up going to the right once I come back. There, I'm speeding up going to the right, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. You see the arrows when they're going in the same direction? I'm speeding up, opposite direction, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. Slowing down slowly, but oh, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. Speeding up, slowing down. Slowing down, 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 slowing down. Speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. Slowing down, 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 slowing down. Stop. Speeding up, speeding up, speeding up. Go, 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 go. Gosh, I'm having too much fun with this. Speed will increase when velocity and acceleration are going in the same direction, same signs. Speed will decrease if velocity and acceleration are opposite signs. Um... We have to talk about going towards or away from origins. Um, here's the origin, zero. What am I going towards the origin? I'm going towards the origin when I am going to the right. No, nope, not always. Here I'm going away from oh, you want going away from the origin. Here I'm going towards the origin. Towards the origin. Now I'm away from the origin. Towards the origin. Away from the origin. You have to take into account where you are located, as well as the direction you're traveling in. If you are to the right of the origin, moving right, you're moving away. If you're to the right of the origin, moving left, you're moving towards. So you got to look at both. Make sure we keep it, that in mind. And keep in mind this guy moving. When you're asked questions about the moving man, um, you know, moving left and right, origins at zero, velocity is getting bigger, velocity is decreasing. Doesn't mean you're going to the left if your velocity is decreasing. Your velocity decreasing means you could be slowing down. Your velocity is decreasing could mean you're speeding up. All all different situations. So towards the origin, away from the origin. Look at position and velocity. And so that was lesson one. Then we move into finding displacement of velocities in instant constant. Situation one, our velocity is constant. If I told you I'm traveling 20 miles per hour from zero to three hours, how far have I traveled? Or what is my displacement? You could be like easy. Velocity times time. 20 miles per hour, three hours, 60 miles. And you're like, that was a piece of cake. But then I ask you, and, and the way we can look at velocity times time is an area under a velocity curve. 
Here's my velocity curve. Here's 20. And from 0 to 3, what does 60 look like? The area under my velocity curve is all of my velocity times my time. That is 60. 20 times 3. Okay? But here's my other situation. What if I have velocity that's changing? I have velocity that's 3t squared from 0 to 3. Well, you might be thinking velocity times time, but I don't know how to do that. I have no idea because my velocity is changing to take all these velocities and multiply by time. Now, your calculator can do a very good job of approximating it, but we need an alternate approach. Well, we use an integral to, to say this is, uh, you know, the area. And we say we need an infinite sum from 0 to 3 of my velocity times the infinitely small time in which we're at that. Well, there's an alternate approach. Or, there's another way to find displacement. You could find a change in position. Well, how do I find a change in position? Well, you could take the antiderivative of 3t squared. You get t cubed. This is a position function. Now, it's t cubed plus a c. And you're like, oh, well, I don't know what's going on here. Well, it turns out, like, this initial position won't matter when you're finding the change. So instead of finding this area, I'm going to go an alternate approach. I'm going to say, I'm going to take the antiderivative and find the change in the antiderivative from 0 to 3. So I get um, 27 minus, or 27 plus c minus 0 plus c. Well, the c's cancel, doesn't matter. Boom, 27. This, my friends, is the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says, if you want to find an area under a curve, an infinite sum, it's equal to the change in the antiderivative. We talk about displacement. It can either be the area under your velocity curve or change in position. Not worrying about the plus C because the plus C's will cancel and initial position doesn't matter. Well, this will go for anything. An area under a function, maybe the derivative of a function, maybe just and I don't want to say or. They're the same. And what's great about this is you can find like a missing position. Say like I don't know I don't know x of b. Well, I know a starting position at some time. I can add the displacement. Displacement will be area under my velocity. This will be what you'll do to find missing function values. Say, like, this situation. But now it's not v, it's going to be f prime. This is used so often. This is definitely going to be used on the uh, free response portion of the AP exam. It's probably the most used um, formula or equation on the calculator part of the AP exam. So be ready for this one. Fortunately for you guys, you get to use your calculator on the entire free response test. Um, for my 2020 people. I think that will be good. Hopefully you won't have to take many antiderivatives. I'm sure you will. Um, now remember, like, if you don't have a calculator, you have to take the antiderivative. You have to find the antiderivative. You could do this with a calculator. You could actually type in integral from 0, 3, and 3t squared. We should know that. Uh, be careful. Let's say you have um, f of 4, but you're trying to find f of 2. Well, your displacement ends up being the change between 2 and 4. These numbers have to be in order. It's not always going to be from left to right, depending on your situation. So you can either subtract 2 to 4 or um, just keep in mind b, a, a to b. Now, uh, distance is displacement is your velocity times your time. So it's your change in your position. Distance So velocity is negative means like 
uh, you know, I'm not adding more distance or I'm not adding more displacement. Distance is speed times time. So regardless of direction or your absolute value of velocity times time. So it's important to remember if you are asked to find distance and you're given a velocity curve, say your velocity curve is like this, for speed, you're not going to be looking at this area. This area under this velocity curve is, is uh, displacement. You would, for distance, look at the absolute value, or you'd make this negative uh, area a positive area. And this area, this positive area, and then this absolute value would make this a positive. This positive area would be my distance. Okay, so if you ever have negative velocities, make them positive, and then find the area under that. Or if you already know the displacement, but you know some negative areas, make those areas positive so that you know you're traveling. This area is tra telling you how you're traveling to the right. This is how you're traveling to the left. We should remember some questions where it's like, when is speed increasing or decreasing given the graph of velocity? Uh, we might as well do something like that. Go back to this. So here's the graph of velocity. And this is one, two, three, four. And let's just say, yeah, I went up and down. And this is velocity. Questions could be um, when is the particle stopped? Velocity is zero. When is the velocity zero? At t equals two and four. When are we moving left? So when my velocity is negative. My velocity is negative between two and four. When is velocity increasing? This is kind of obvious. Like when is my velocity values going up from zero to one and from negative from three to four? But now the question is when speed is increasing. Speed is increasing. Or when is probably, when is my acceleration, let's talk about acceleration, acceleration negative. When is my acceleration negative? Well, acceleration is the change in velocity. If velocity is decreasing, the acceleration is negative. You look at tangent slopes, when the tangent slopes of velocity are negative, that's when V prime is negative. I was going to be from one to three. But now to the kicker. When is speed, let's say, increasing? Well, just like we've done in the past with f and f prime, it's probably helpful to do analysis of v and v prime. Well, that would be v and a. v is positive until two. It's negative until four. a is Positive until one, negative until three, positive until four. When is speed increasing? When the signs of V and A are the same. When is the signs in V and A the same? From zero to one, from two to three. Okay, so uh, I'm sorry how messy this is, but hopefully we're just given a good idea of what's going on and we're just reminding ourselves of things. Um, what else do we talk about? An average value? Well, it's like if if an average velocity, uh, let's talk about average position. If an average position, no, if an average velocity is an average rate of change in position. Okay? So if an average velocity is a change in position, divided by the change in time. Well, I know that a change in position is also the same as the area under my velocity curve. I know that this is equivalent to this integral. So all of a sudden, I now have some different formula. It looks different, but it actually is the same. Tricky. 
where the average value is the area under my velocity curve, and then I'm going to take this b minus a and kind of throw it over to the side, times 1 over b minus a. Now, what can this be applied for? Anything. The average of something is 1 over b minus a, integral from a to b, of whatever you're trying to find the average of. Not the derivative, not the antiderivative. It's like you want to find an average f. Well, 1 over b minus a, find the area of a to b under f. You're going to find the average acceleration. Average a. 1 over b minus a, integral from a to b of a. Okay, so uh, this is great. However, these last two things you don't have to remember. Uh, distance, this is for 2020 students. You will not have distance on your AP exam. You will not have average value for some reason on your AP exam. But you will have the extreme value theorem. We've talked about absolute maxes and mins and the extreme value theorem. This is another continuous theorem. Function must be continuous. And if a function is continuous on a closed interval, you're guaranteed to have, let's change my closed one, a absolute max and an absolute min. The absolute max could be at a relative max or an endpoint. The absolute min could be at a relative min or an endpoint. In this situation, for this function, here's my absolute max, here's my absolute min. What it means is just like sometimes you have to check endpoints. And your function must be continuous for this. Um, however, let's say you're, you know that you know, your function's derivative just changes sign once on an interval. And we've done this so many times. You know this must be the location of the absolute max. Why? If f prime is positive, you know f, prime, f is going up. If f prime is negative, you know f is going down. That's got to be the location of the max. It can't be here. It can't be there. If you were to justify, you'd be like f of b is the max, overall max, because f prime, all of the values of f prime are positive from a to b, and then all the values of f prime are negative from b to c. You don't have to check your endpoints, but you do have to say that we are positive on this entire interval and negative on this entire interval. You can't just say it changes signs from positive to negative because that does not say, oh, you might change signs again at another location. You know, if we're changing signs at multiple locations, all of a sudden you don't know that this is the max. A could be the max because we're starting at a location going down, up, down. Maybe where we started is higher than where we went to. Okay? So um, those are absolute maxes and mins, and that's unit seven. Let's see how long that took. Whew, longer than I thought.